Hello and welcome to Adikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Dharsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the current affairs and gazette for today, 16th of March 2022. Before we begin, let me welcome all of you participants here. Hi, Babani, Amlan, Kim, Netra, Hima, Kriti, Ashish. Welcome all of you. Thank you for writing these answers. Wonderful work. Let's proceed. We have quite a few articles to cover today. We are the champions. Yes, champions. Let's begin this. Now, before we begin, I have some things to show to you. One of them is uh, related to what we had done in the last uh, meeting itself. The last meeting that we conducted, that's where we spoke about the road structures. And let me just show that for you. All right, there we go. And before that, there is, a, there is a favorite quote I would like to share with you people. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So even if we possess a lot of qualities, if we don't put that to use, good use, it will not be of any use. It will go waste. A lot of talented people are just roaming around doing nothing. On the other hand, people who are working hard, they are the ones who will change the course of destiny. Their destiny and the destiny of uh, everything around themselves. So believe in yourself, uh, have faith in your work, and then you will see the results. So let's begin this discussion. But before that, uh, there were a couple of things that I wanted to show you people. One of them is concrete absorbing uh, tarmac surfaces. Remember, we had discussed this, the type of roads. So this is the road that is being developed at various places. Have a look at this image. The truck will be pouring water on the tarmac surface. And the water gets absorbed completely. This is not rubber. This is the tarmac road. Hima, could you tell us the word for this? The phrase that you that we used yesterday, what was that? Have a look. Permeability of this road is very good so that there is hardly any effect of, uh, uh, of humongous amount of rainfalls, flash floods. And this helps in the management of uh, urban areas very well. So when we spoke about Mumbai handling the disasters, this kind of road would be able to help the system, the drainage system there. So great system. This is one of the things that I wanted to show. The other thing that I wanted to show was, uh, uh, all right, we'll discuss this in the event, uh, in due course. So let's begin this discussion. All right. Hi, Pooja. Hi, Pooja. Yes, Pawn City is a good, good example. But, but exactly of this, the word is porous asphalt roads, the tarred roads and having porosity in them, right? So let's begin this discussion now. What do we have? Today we have three updates. One is on Municipal Corporation of Delhi. We will understand what has been the story, why the decentralization and why reunification. And, that, and on that context only, I gave you the question on advantages of decentralization and what are the issues associated. So, Municipal Corporation of Delhi, we'll understand this. The second one is Medical Devices Policy. India has released a draft policy on the same, talking about reducing the imports, which we are importing to the tune of 80%, uh, especially the high-end medical devices, a policy on the same. The third one, Blockchain Gaming. Good examples used by you people in the answers. Thank you. This day in history dedicated to first liquid fuel rocket, uh, which, was, which was put in air this date itself, 1926. Feature news on corporate governance in India, the NSC issue, the ICIC bank issue, Yes Bank issue, ILFS fraud, so many of them. And then this uh, makes it necessary to understand what is the meaning of corporate go governance, what are the various components of its pillars of corporate governance, what are the issues raised, how can it be solved, what is Kotak committee recommendation and how we have tried to incorporate that. Right. So this is in the feature news. A very interesting article uh, related to GS Paper 2 governance and indirectly related to India's economy as well. Feature news for today on corporate governance. Image of the day on uh, an Iron Age memorial found in Andhra Pradesh. Terms and concepts, man pads, booklet be aware by RBI and uh, um, uh, a squid named by Joey Biden. We will, Biden, we'll understand what this is and starfish, uh, critically endangered fish found in off the coast of Chennai. 
territorials that we have one is on uh, the misfiring that happened brahmos misfiring that happened and uh, some updates on the same and then uh, of course there was also a question that amlet had amlet had posed in fact he had stated we'll discuss that also the second one is on uh, higher education and the third one is on uh, reset of ties between us and china is it happening or not a very beautiful editorial we'll understand each of them today's case is on uh, uh, bahini an initiative to distribute napkins uh, sanitary pads in in sikkim so let's begin this gopal good evening to you all right yes porous asphalt roads so the first update is on municipal corporation of delhi so the, any administration can be made easier if people participate once we decentralize the whole structure then we become more people centric people are the ones who are able to um, uh, judge the project to participate in audits and this is one of the causes because of which this is one of the causes because of which delhi's uh, municipal corporation was divided into three segments three segments right there are other reasons also let's understand each of them this is the complete map of delhi and uh, delhi right now has a north delhi municipal corporation south delhi municipal corporation to the east of yamuna river is east delhi municipal corporation in addition we have two more municipal corporations one one is the delhi cantonment board right uh, so wherever there are cants we do not have the civil administration we have a military administration aided by civil administration and this is what uh, is a part of civil services also delhi cant delhi delhi uh, delhi cant board and then we also have a small area very small area which is uh, which is near the right the location is right here right and this is the ndmc new delhi municipal corporation and a small part of this area is also the place where the uh, president lives rashtrapati bhavan prime minister's home all those so there are five municipal corporations north south east ndmc administered separately and then delhi cant right so uh, now one of the chief reasons for dividing the administration into various components was the ease of fun functioning right to be able to fund the project uh, separately for example the requirement in south delhi could be different than east delhi and could be different in north delhi for example the level of pollution that is available in east delhi is different and south delhi is a different kind of society north delhi has got different levels of population density so therefore dividing them was one of the important uh, uh, causes things that happened in the year 2012 right now the government is also proposing to the central government is also proposing to merge all these administrations again we will understand what is the cause of this decentralization what are the impacts of it and uh, what is the result of it right result and why do we want to remerge it see uh, we will not blame the governments this was during the time when uh, uh, congress government was in power and now we have a different government so we will not get into this let me only tell you the uh, the the intellectual part of it south delhi is largely that area which is more well off posh societies and the taxation that they get the tax they get from property taxes vehicle taxes of troy whatever it is the multiple taxes that they impose that is high on the other hand the distribution of hospitals is also such local hospitals delhi administ not delhi administration the municipal corporation administration is such that different places have got different hospitals for example ndmc belt has got six hospitals since the distribution of hospitals is different at different places the payment has to be done accordingly but then people are residing in different areas for example if hospital administration is in ndmc and people live in north delhi areas the payment happens through ndmc now if mdmc this is only an example if mdmc does not have proportional funds how does it manage so the institutional difference the taxation difference is there between these administrations so uh, and, and also a lot of recruitments have happened the government is not able to pay back the uh, you know salaries administrative expenses of at the micro levels of these various various administrative units the three uh, municipal corporation areas so the government says overall that we will unify all of it so that we are able to ease the whole process in case we are collecting more funds from the south we will transfer it to other places so this is how they are trying to handle the situation and this is the update of delhi mcd right the center is likely to take, to take up unification of delhi's three municipal corporations in upcoming budget sessions of parliament oh all right please do remember the funding of uh, the 
uh, this area, Delhi Cant Board and then NDMC happens separately. They, thus, the funding happens separately because N, NDMC area, the New Delhi, it is the capital region, right? Capital of the whole country. So, funding happens differently. The la real estate, defense, policing happens in that area separately. It is very different from all the other, uh, you know, the territories. And uh, Delhi Cantonment Board also receives different funds. So, we are trying to merge the other three uh, municipal corporations, all right? MCD, oh yes, one important fact, MCD is the second largest civic body after uh, Tokyo, after Tokyo Metropolis, MCD, right? So, so many people living here, one of the largest agglomerates in the world and it is supposed to overtake Tokyo also. If we do not reduce, yes, there was another update and that was from few days back. That is that the, the city limits, not city limits, but the uh, uh, NCR limits, if you have background of uh, polity, public administration or geography, this will be very much, even sociology, it will be helpful here. The NCR territories have been expanded, right? They keep on getting expanded so that the, if, if the area is included in NCR, it can come under special laws, regulations to be able to handle the, um, the real estate, the land and the finances, real estate majorly, so that development happens. So extension of Delhi Metro to happen to NCR areas in Haryana, all of Haryana, the, uh, most of Haryana, then a part of Uttar Pradesh, all the and part of Rajasthan. Now, lately the government said that we will want to reduce the uh, the outer limits of NCR. Why? So that we are able to administer the Delhi region well and better, right? So, because once the region comes in NCR territories, there are additional obligations for everybody. One obligation is if the pollution goes high, then every economic activity has to be curtailed, right? So this is only one. There are many other regulations that are imposed on NCR and therefore many territories they want to be out of this place so that they are able to carry out economic activities at their will. Also, if uh, the area is smaller, the management will be better, right? So extending it and calling it the largest agglomerate in the world, it will not be a feat. The management of population will be very tough, right? So Japan, do remember the fundamental duties are of a different nature there, right? People are obligated to follow it in Japan, but then in India, it is so voluntary that um, it will be tough to manage 3 crore of population. So do consider all those things. MCD, the second largest civic body in the world after Tokyo. And um, it has got 3 parts, North, East and South, right? And uh, we have 5 local bodies right now, that is absolutely true. And this is where you should also talk about green bonds. If these bodies, municipal bodies are uh, well doing well if they are doing well they can also incorporate green bonds where they can be funded through loans and if they are doing well if they are able to return profits the people who have invested they will be uh, profited from these bonds right so they can also initiate this process that's what we studied yesterday mumbai city right talking of becoming net zero and um, that with the help of green bonds also right so growing population vast geographical spread what are the reasons for trifurcation, right? Growing population and its management at decentralized levels, better delivery and governance, better delivery of services. But then look at the financial stress, increased expenses of MCD. The funds that were uh, coming in, they were not in proportion to the kind of people living in, right? Unequal distribution of resources and expenses. The areas were demarketed in a way that South Delhi Municipal Corporation would get more finances because of the posh uh, localities it would have in, within it, right? See, SDMC. Uh, would have a posh uh, urban area, right, which is quite different from uh, the NDMC area and quite di different from East Delhi Municipal Corporation, which is, you know, what is usually called as Yamuna Par, right, where it has, where there are more slums located, right. So, how will people be able to get uh, funds and finances for EDMC? There is, see, whenever you go to a marriage, the marriage, uh, you know, the manager says, that there's a base cost, there's a fixed cost which will apply even in case you have very few people attending the marriage. Even if it is 10 people attending the marriage, the lighting has to be appropriate. Even if it is uh, uh, just 20 people attending the marriage, the gatekeepers have to be there. Similarly, if, if we have 100 people also or, or 1000 people, the lighting will be same and the gatekeepers will be same. Similarly, when, when we look of municipal corporation management, there have to be some standing level or minimum level of infrastructure institutional presence that has to be mandated even in case the population is less. So EDMC also has to maintain certain number of trucks, municipal load waste. They also have to maintain the electricity supply. They also need to have 
uh, uh, the you know vehicles to handle the pollution of the city right even when the funding is less so look at the kind of disparity edmc and sdmc has the so finances are not there with the edmc this is the challenge and that is why integrating them back is uh, one of the viable solutions and why has the, the problem come up now it is because of the pandemic the less availability of uh, fund and more expenditures and this is why they say okay let's do this let's integrate all of them together see right so many other sources of revenues property tax uh, octroi octroi is the tax when you know certain areas when you enter them they impose on commercial activities tax on animals carriages advertisement tax grants given by the state government central governments borrowing taken all these are the way in which funding is done but even in, the, in, the, in that case they're not able to handle the funding as well so this is the first update what do you take from this update what we take from this update is uh, the fact that uh, the uh, the responsibilities of any decentralized unit it can it, it should be done it, provided it is uh, it, the funds are viable provided the administration is viable right provided there is a foresight foresight uh, of uh, the planning of the regions right because here edmc and sdmc were not planned accordingly right for their funds for their administrative expenses for their expansion so uh, this is a good example of how uh, funds get wasted so around 10 years and then imagine the least that will happen is painting of all the vehicles and all the institutions changing of the boards where sdmc was written and now they would change it to mcd right so even in that case the fund fund expenses would go to crores and crores of uh, rupees changing the name itself so take uh, three or four valuable points from this and translate it to all the governance uh, answers that you have all right hi natish good evening hi vivek welcome okay all right let's get to the second update the second update is on medical device policy in the country if you remember i had shared that uh, it is not only uh, it is not only the uh, see uh, there are various components of the medical industry right some of it relates to export some of it is about import so when we talk of human resources lot of get lot of it gets exported india has possibly the highest number of doctors who go abroad and then you know they do not come back right so this is about brain drain human resources on the other hand we have two more components the medicines pharmaceutical industry and then we have a uh, medical devices industry medical devices industry right so they are different industries however their engagement also is very different for example human resources we fall short of them right uh, and many of them they migrate abroad medicines we are good at creating generic medicines however the uh, specialized medication all that we import from other countries right those medicines which have got good patent we import them the third one is the medical devices industry uh, ironically and sadly we import 80% of medical devices most of it the high end medical devices in the country 80% right this is a huge uh, figure and if you if i want to show you the image of what kind of devices these are right so if you ever donated blood these devices are very expensive they come from european countries right i, I donated blood last time in the month of i think september or october and that's where i asked where do these devices come from they come from germany these devices right uh, 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 that was specifically for uh, uh, plasma donation right that was one if you have mri scans right if you go through if one goes through a procedure and they have to be uh, in a part of intensive care unit most of these devices are imported high end devices are imported in india because we do not have those manufacturing capabilities right and uh, since the prospect of uh, manufacturing is high since there is a lot of demand in india therefore the government has initiated the draft medical devices policy right smart enough all right accepted that it is smart enough but the the, but the problem has been highlighted right now because of the covid situation it's very simple enough right so uh, india thinks all right where are the data here here is the data have a look by 2047 india will be home to 
25 billion dollar medical technology companies and will have a 10 to 12 percent global market share global market share it will have but you know the present market share especially of creation on selling of devices usa leads it usa which has a 40 percent market share followed by europe 25 percent and japan 15 percent see japan is one of the best examples of no resources high technology high human resources right so 15 percent share of medical devices market even when it's such a small country europe 25 percent share and usa has 40 percent share right now india is only importing these devices but india is supposed to grow in this market right so what are the devices ct scan devices mri dialysis machines anesthesia machines ventilators trans catheters right stents heart or occluders now these are those devices for example if one is not able to you know take in the food orally by chewing the food so in that case you know there are pipes that are injected in the body and then the whole process is made smoother all these devices are again imported from uh, abroad now india is supposed to have a huge market share 10 to 12 percent by the year 2047 if we have such a huge market share then why not create those devices in the country rather than importing so this is where you should talk about pmp phase manufacturing program fdis in pharma industry in, not in pharma in medical devices industry this is what what is this this is simply manufacturing industry no manufacturing of medical devices phase manufacturing programs fdis design linked incentives designing of these devices in india and then incentives are given right so these are the uh, you know, solutions to these problems have a look where do we import our devices from we import these devices from usa from germany from china from singapore and from netherlands right this is the level in which we import all our devices and majorly from usa 20 percent of the share and then after that it is germany and then uh, other countries china and singapore right so this is the proposal by department of pharmaceutical right and uh, they say that uh, spending on high risk projects in medical devices has increased if we give tax rebates refunds people will be able to manufacture these devices in the country that is a very good thing right local industry up the see once you know the concept when you once you know some data about this the other factors of manufacturing industry remain all the same what, what is the example local industry engagements joint research a company from abroad an indian company joint research public private partnership pricing environment right a static pricing environment so price discovery here uh, pricing authority also for the same so see a lot of points remain the same for all the manufacturing companies once this once once you remember it for one entity they will be the same so when you look at uh, and and when you look and, and also then you can also start putting in other points for example um, how about uh, talking about the intellectual property again it has to be preserved here how about marketing of these devices advertising standard advertising standards uh, council of india right all of them will be included here as well and certification industry right so uh, bis again here point i'm making is if you create this structure for once for manufacturing bodies it will be the same for all of them right same for uh, electronics industry same for chip designing industry same for defense production in india same for pharmaceutical industry and medical devices industry same for auto industry whatever same thing so there's a need because we are heavily import reliant especially on high-end technologies right and also that india's india has lowest per capita expenditure on medical devices you will be surprised to know we are spending as less as three dollars per capita and average global is 47 dollars this is the uh, proportion in which we are spending so this is 1 is to 18. This is very, very uh, sad state of affairs for expenditure and consumption. And, and you look at uh, the developed countries, USA, Germany. See, here in countries like USA and Germany, the whole medical industry has been commercialized. 
after the insurance sector came in if you remember i had spoken of the insurance sector which has increased the competition provided lesser margin for uh, the industries to gain profit from so this is the reason that you see high expenditure on uh, uh, medical products devices in uh, these advanced countries this is going to happen to india also once we commercialize even furthermore once we start spending furthermore we have a high population but it's its consumption is not as high the value of the product is also not high the purchasing power is also not very high in india but then sometime or the other it is supposed to rise maybe uh, this century at the end of this century and at the at the end of next century it will be far higher than what uh, we are looking at right now all right so this is the update the third update is on blockchain gaming technology reminding you of the word that was used by the finance minister she used the word avgc avgc animation visual effects gaming and comic and she said that there must be a task force set up they should be able to explore what is the prospect of animation visual effects gaming and comic because right now what we are doing is we are importing uh, all the games in our country right we are not able to design those games high end 3d 4d games on machines in india right so uh, not only that uh, animation visual effects all of these things any this is what some of you watched no any they are not indian many of them are uh, japanese south korean or uh, de developed in some other country so when there is a high demand of these products in india then we must have them produced in india india itself but what are the challenges one of the challenges is the use of blockchain itself on one hand blockchain offers uh, innumerable advantages right decentralized administration personalized experience on the other hand blockchain is a technology see this technology has no issues but then cryptocurrency is based on this government has not legalized them right now even calling them currencies is a question in that when we talk about it then blockchain also is in some shadows in that way right because blockchain is again getting used for creation of games right so this will help in preserving the anonymity of the user right this will help in individual user experience far better than what was before right this will help in creating online gaming tokens gaming coins you would be able to if you remember our discussion on uh, on uh, on metaverse we had spoken that the people will be available digitally they'll be able to purchase assets digitally they will have a digital presence and that presence will be more than that of a specific game that will be ensured through with the with the help of blockchain gaming technology decentralized yet present virtually for everybody to use right so these are the prospects that it offers but there are challenges for example one is the legal challenge itself right the uses of blockchain and cryptocurrencies could be questioned by the government so one policy clarity is required from the government's end then when there is anonymity then there is also an issue of uh, invading you know privacy of another person because when once we don't know we don't know what is the lim limit of invading somebody else's privacy this is what happened on uh, uh, metaverse when another person's virtual identity was manhandled and this was this came up as an issue so this kind of handling of privacy or uh, you know an individual's autonomy in virtual spaces this is uh, a star mark this is the question right not only that there is something called as game of chance and uh, game of skill this is where we need better clarity game of chance means tukka fluke and when they are game of chances then uh, you know it comes as a, as betting we are betting against what we don't know about right we don't know the outcomes game of skill is somewhere where through practice through repetition through possession of possession of some skills we can perform better in the games but game of chance is not such now the supreme court largely has said till now there are cases being heard all throughout the country on this game the supreme court has said that none of the games are games of skill or completely games of uh, completely games of skill the the games will involve some some level of chance as well and this is where uh, uh, you know the policy needs to be again clear how are we approaching the games of skill how are we approaching games of chance one simple example of this is myself playing uh, that particular game uh, of uh, the chinese tencent games what was the name C counter strike no tencent games the chinese tencent game the popular game so when i would play i would realize that if i would use 
two fingers on my iPad, it was not as as skillful. If I using if I was using four fingers to play the game, it was far faster. So that is a skill that I I honed, but then mastering that skill was another capability, right? Along with that, if one is using hotkeys on the keyboards, that is even faster. So, is it a completely game of skill in that case? What is the name of the game? Any? Yeah, PUBG. PUBG is the game. Tencent Games. So, uh, it was a game of skill, but then it was also a game of chance. This is what the court has mentioned. If there is more clarity, there will be more understanding on A, V, G, C sector. And this is how there will be more spendings, right? So, this is the update from here. Let me see what is the conversation. Hima says, I used to organize blood donation camps in my college. Oh, very nice, very nice. I also do not leave any opportunity of donating blood because in eventually it, it uh, restores the quality or the tendency of the bone marrow to start creating red blood cells. So let's not lose that opportunity. Good work, Hima. Very nice. Okay, Bhavani has been donating blood. Okay, good enough. Okay. Yes, there are a lot of games of chance online. Okay, moving ahead. All right. So this is the update from here. The vast scope and potential of blockchain technology has attracted gaming industry over the past few years. As much as many as I think 40 to 60 percent of uh, industry in UK and USA that has gone, uh, uh, you know, online with the help of blockchain technology right now, right? So this is the level, and it is also supposed to come in India also. This is where there'll be less clarity. Yes, 60 percent of American UK-based online game developers have started to use blockchain technology, right? So legality of uh, the games, this is where India must come more clear. When I read the source article, it was a long one from Indian Express, but provided the valuable insights. For example, uh, calling them, you know, what are the currencies that we gain or spend here? What are they? Are they currencies or are they virtual assets? There must be clarity here because we are we might be using cryptocurrencies again here. So this is where the you know uh, issue between government's policy and uh, uh, the demand of the society. These are at loggerheads. Cryptocurrency based, gaming coins, right? We, if you remember, I had shared that the coming times, you will be sitting in your sofas in a virtual world inside your home and you would be earning money through playing games. Not you, but maybe your children after 30 years. This is how it is supposed to be where people will not have a lot of things to do outside their home but then there will be completely different uh, virtual world and to be able to and that is already happening in countries like South Korea and Japan it's already happening in China as well many other countries also they have already adopted the sea why do, why do we say that 60 percent of the gaming industry in UK and uh, USA they have uh, started using blockchain because they're using these advanced features like having cryptocurrency based transactions in the games itself like having gaming coins itself Coins completely based on game, gaining virtual assets. By the time we enter this, after a couple of decades, we would realize that we have gaming champions, gaming champions, and they've what they've owned a lot of assets. They can those assets can be exchanged. They can be transferred from one person to the other, provided that person is uh, you know in access to the other person, right? Provided finances are paid, so somebody is already gaining that edge. And for India to be able to uh, advance in this. We need to have clear policies here. Need for intellectual property also. Yes, intellectual property protection that is important. Privacy and then uniform advertising standard council of India also. Uniform advertising means, you know, uh, these guidelines were, you know, you know, put just a few days back, and we had discussed these guidelines. One of them was that you can't call them, you call, you can't call these assets as the currencies. So these are the guidelines which must be streamlined. All right. So this is the update. This day in history dedicated to the first time a rocket flew, liquid fueled rocket flew, right? March 16, 1926. Robert Goddard, he didn't know what he was getting into, but then it would lead it would lead to space flights later on. Right? So significant achievements in rocket propulsion. And see, this is liquid fueled rocket. There are various kinds of fuel, solid, liquid, gases. 
usually the first stage of a rocket there are various stages three or four stages two stages depending on how far the rocket is supposed to go there are boosters placed across the uh, across the rocket so the first stage usually is a solid stage solid stage because solid is high dense solid is something that can propel a lot of energy it can create a lot of energy so the first few stages first stage is solid stage usually usually the second stage usually is again a liquid stage right now the difference between solid and liquid is that liquid can be poured drop by drop in proportion or depending on the quantity required and when that is being done that means the proportion of liquid being injected it is being regulated why not it must be regulated in in the first stage where the lift off was to happen the first few uh, say few kilometers the heavy weight has to be lifted and it has to be removed from state of inertia of rest to motion therefore solid propellant and a lot of propellant and next stage when it is already set in motion come to you know uh, places with lesser gravity than liquid stage and further stage the cryogenic engines will have pouring of the fuel at sub sub low temperatures at a very very regulated proportion so that will be very very high uh, uh, you know efficient engine with a lot of nuances and that is the reason that it is a different engine altogether called as cryogenic stage fuel and cryogenic cryogenic engine right so this gentleman started with liquid fueled rocket see liquid fueled and this is the base on which the rocket is able to stand itself and after afterwards it will be able to take off this is what he did in 1926 leading to defense space industry all of it getting prospered later feature news for today is on corporate governance in india we will understand the whole structure we will understand what is the nsc scam right chitra and mr uh, so uh, subramanyam we will also understand other scams and uh, what have been the issue behind these scams what have been the solution given by the uh, by various committees uday kota committee we will also understand what is the way forward in the feature news today all right so this is the feature news for today what is the image of the day this is on one of the uh, rock pillars that have been found in uh, andhra pradesh right possibly in the memory of a dead person three and a half thousand years old imagine this so government said okay all right we'll create a perimeter around which this uh, this entity can be preserved right so rituals ceremonies all that why liquid fuel easily to maneuver rocket yeah yeah it's easy to maneuver a rocket yes vivek that's absolutely true is this the rocket in the pic yes that is the rocket in the picture bhavani in those times this is how rockets would be <laughs> we didn't have those infrastructures for rocket support this is 1926 that we are speaking of when india's uh, space flights not space flight but test uh, rockets were uh, you know launched they were also launched like this also this only in 1940s and 50s we did not have that infrastructure Right, so test rockets would be launched through these kind of uh, structures only. 1926, nobody believed in them. Right, it was not even believed that uh, uh, space flight could happen. It was never believed that uh, aeroplanes could fly. Right, it was like an imagination. And uh, right now, people will not trust all, all trust us also what we are doing. But once you get through, then people will start trusting. Oh yeah, this was possible. This was one of the keys to success. How did we not follow it? No worries. We will we'll start right now. Okay. Hi, Tiyasha. No worries. It's fine that you've come back. Latency rate. Yes, absolutely. See, when the decentralized gaming, decentralized banking, all of it is happening, latency will be less. But latency will also come in question when we speak of our NSE, National Stock Exchange, and um, the co-working facilities, right? So we will understand latency better there. So Ashish also acknowledges that gaming of skill chances can be converted into gaming of skill with the better configured systems. That's absolutely true. But then this is where government has to come clear and say what it is, what is required, right? Because government has in, introduced these policies, task forces. However, the policy has not changed. Yes, everybody, there is a form that has been uh, put here that is on the feedback. Uh, what do you think is this current affairs session about? Is it good? Is it bad? Please feel free to give your inputs. This will only help us improve as an organization and help you serve better. Right. So uh, if you 
genuinely dedicate yourself uh, 30 seconds i think that would be 30 seconds or a minute that would help us thank you terms and concepts the first term for today is man pad what is a man pad man portable air defense systems this is where i want to show you a couple of images around this so this is the man pad and when it is launched it is launched against uh, uh, you know a tank a moving object right or an aircraft itself and now lately there have been an increase in the uses of man pads in ukraine these man pads were brought from america and now ukraine is using them to defend its cities and and other areas right and this is where russian tanks russian armored vehicles they have uh, fallen prey to it see uh, how usually how usually it happens is that when we use these man portable devices anti tank anti tank devices see india also has got uh, nag no anti tank guided missiles but then when this anti tank guided missile is put on you know uh, this uh, you know the whole carrier this carrier india does not have india did not have the capacity to have this as handheld man portable devices because it was too heavy but lately only india has been able to create with the help of drdo the complete you know a launch system which could be uh, held by the human being itself right so if you've seen border movie who was it uh, sunny devil carrying this i don't remember who was it or sunil chetty uh, somebody was holding this in their hands in some of the other movie i think border so india earlier had this whole structure placed on a, 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 a tank kind of vehicle but now they have been able to have this uh, by by you know uh, having a, a human carrying this this is one of the updates the other update is about what is happening in russia when when the when a person is firing this it is actually harming the tanks right because tanks can fire great distance or a shorter distance in terms of kilometers right but if a person is just 500 meters away and at different direction they are able to fire it immediately this harms the tank and one shot and this is what is going to you know penetrate the uh, armor of tank and going to destroy it absolutely this is the reason that any armored vehicle needs to have some infantry see uh, armored vehicle usually could come in cavalry uh, right for example tanks come in cavalry there is a mechanized infantry they have machines and they are placed inside the machines human resources are placed in child machines what is required is that whenever tanks are used tanks must be used along with some infantry some infantry to be able to defend the tanks so if somebody is firing these man pads these human beings these human resources infantry should be able to fight these people and uh, clear out these kind of issues but right now russia is facing the onslaught of these man pads and that is why it was in use what happened in olden times was that if you are using uh, uh, you know horsemen if you are using cavalry early, early early times the you know the olden times the stone age and uh, not, not the stone age stone age i am i'm actually speaking of a game uh, age of empires in older times when maybe 200 300 400 years back or the times when there were crusades happening crusades were the wars that were imposed in uh, in europe right for gaining back the supremacy of the christians over the territories gained by the muslim crusades so those were the times when cavalry men horse men would be used but cavalry men if suppose this is a horse and uh, uh, you know the horse has had see grooming of a horse and breeding of a horse everything it is very expensive and a person mounted on a horse so this is uh, you know that person can with a with a spear only can can have a humongous impact on uh, the armed forces but then what what in case the other person here is using bow and arrow so this is the reason that uh, a, a cavalry must follow with pedal sena infantry must follow with uh, another level of uh, armed personnel like the archers right all of them move together similarly in modern times the cavalry moves along with the pedal sena that is the infantry right this is how the uh, whole structure is planned okay oh getting back to one more article because see there are times when the visual images they show they share a lot they, they tell a lot now this is the image of s400 missile i will like to show you how it looks like see s400 battery when it was brought to india this battery constitutes of one the launchers see this is a launcher the left one is a launcher the right one is a radar and the center one 
is a uh, you know it it is the unit for management administration where postmans are sitting right so this is the management unit and the left one is a launcher there's not they don't have one launcher here right one launcher will have four of these uh, 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 canister systems four of them and they have eight of these launchers placed in one battery so eight eight of these systems 32 missiles all together along with a management unit and along with the radar radar will be able to detect if there is a movement around and then all these launchers will quickly be launched and this will be handled with the help of the uh, management unit right so this is how s400 operates and this is very similar to how our uh, brahmos also operates all the missiles are operated with the help of radar systems the, which which detect the enemy and then there is a missile system this is how it operates if you remember we had shared that this whole system is canister driven these are the canisters the covers and this is how they can be carried from one place to another if the missile is naked missile then it cannot be ported from one place to another in uh, all weather circumstances right so if you look at this image the whole battery now this is s400 battery right it is moving from one place to another right this is the battery see portable being made to launch and you must have a look at how it gets launched similar is the structure of uh, the launching of uh, brahmos also it gets launched takes initial thrust and after that the rocket uh, propels itself at a very very high pace see gets launched to a level and after that a high pace movement see very very fast the same is the structure with s500 and this very similar structure for bofors missiles as well uh, i'm sorry not bofors but uh, uh, the indian brahmos all right so this is the ability and yes amlan was absolutely correct when he mentioned the point that uh, the brahmos missile are fire and forget once you fire them we don't have to deal with them it cannot be navigated uh, uh, you know by us and also that it cannot be uh, uh, you know the self destruction ability of brahmos is not there that's absolutely true all right once target has been fixed then nothing to be done there man pads that's the reason they have been in use all right to 10 to 20 20 kgs who can carry it people who are not underweight not longer than 1.8 meters this is the update booklet be aware by rbi rbi has released the booklet which will help us understand uh, how to carry out digital payments how not to get caught up in uh, sim swaps phishing wishing links lottery etc fake websites uh, a few days back a few months back i had put one of the ads on on uh, uh, olx and when i put that ad i saw that i received some people messages they want to you know participate in the transaction and they immediately said that uh, you share your number i shared my number and uh, immediately after they passed uh, something on my whatsapp uh, uh, you know a, a qr code and they said through this you will receive the money and i did not trust all this i i said you passed me on my you know upi id why are you passing it on you know through this and immediately i was blocked every transaction was blocked everything was blocked so what i am saying is i didn't even know of these technologies which work towards uh, you know taking uh, money through fraudulent means i did not even know and that is where rbi has released these booklets what are the standard modes of payment one simple example of what happens online is wishing and phishing right so wishing is one example where we receive emails or phone calls saying we are from a you know so and so company we we are a reputed company we want to Uh, have an interview with you we are all right with your opinions we think that you can do really well so prime minister narendra modi wants to be, meet you something like that some so random sh such random stuff that uh, you you would be surprised and then they ask for our basic details our phone number our uh, personal details and this is where this is what is called as wishing right so in in lieu of calling themselves a popular company which is completely fake right a wishing attack is on us phishing attack whaling attack are of the similar kind right so whaling is the attack on a popular person right targeting elon musk targeting the premier's leaders of the country business corporate world leaders phishing is such attack on uh, you know the common people so so uh, this is how rbi has released a book called as be aware right so one example for you here 
Now this is uh, the image of an organism which was lately found, fossilized and Mr. Biden's name has been attached to it, right? It has been given the name of Mr. Biden as biden -y. This is how the organism actually looks like. This is the image, just 12 centimeters long and this, this is quite representative of what is squid in the modern world. Different number of limbs, right now 8, 10 limbs and this had probably... This one has squid as I think eight limbs, no, and octopus, and then this had ten limbs. This is the difference. Otherwise, you know, just name. And why Biden's name? Because it was thought that Mr. Biden would be able to um, fund these kind of projects very well. So, Mr. Biden, climate change, and all that. That is why Mr. Biden's name. Sawfish. Recently, a sawfish was found off the coast of Chennai, and it was caught. It was caught in uh, the regular fishing activities. This sawfish that was caught, that was that is extremely big, extremely big, around 20 foot, yeah, 20 foot sawfish was captured and it was dead by the time it was brought up. And uh, this is a critically endangered species, not found around India at all. In the last few decades, there have been only four or five sightings of sawfish. If you look at the Google image, you would understand what beauty, beauty it is, right? So the front, the protruded part of this fish is the shape of a saw why saw so that when it goes you know at the at the sea basis it can you know easily use the saw kind of um, shape to be able to dig out right dig out or detect or slash its prey right so this is the sawfish uh, protected species under uh, wildlife protection act and uh, supposed to exist in hardly 5000 numbers around the whole world usually seen off the coast of florida and rarely found in India around, but then this sawfish, a huge size sawfish, it was lifted with the help of a crane, I saw in a video, and uh, this is no more uh, right now. They are also called as carpenter sharks, carpenter sharks or sawfishes, right, vital part of marine systems. Uh, as they forage and unearth smaller organisms, making it easier for animals to find prey. This is what reminds me of another organism, another animal called as... Um, uh, rhino. Rhinosaurus are also very good for the ecosystem. Why? It is because the horns of the rhinosaurus they utilize to excavate the surface and this is how uh, you know they, they become a vital part of the ecosystem. Not the marine but the terrestrial ecosystem. They make it easier for other animals also to find prey. Right? Unearth small organisms, transportation of uh, the seeds, germination, all that happens through these animals. So rhino, again a vital part of the ecosystem as is sawfish. See, this is what we have started to understand. IUCN, red list, this is critically endangered. Alright, not even, now even if it was accidentally found, it was traded with another human being. So trading is illegal, therefore a case was also registered and again those people indulged in these activities. Okay. Misfiring and its trail of poor strategic abilities. Right, so misfiring from India's end and this is where Defence Minister had to give an explanation that yes, all our defence capabilities are intact. This editorial talks of uh, uh, rapper building both the countries, rapper building between both the countries, expert level talks are mandatory, confidence building measures are required between these countries, right. Pre-notification of flight testing of ballistic missiles is there but rather include the, um, the cruise missiles as well inside the same so that in case you are testing you inform your opponent in case of all this. See, these missiles were only being tested but what if in case they were being tested and there was a defense weapon engaged from Pakistan's end and it would have fired, what in case that had happened? What in case it was felt from Pakistan's end, felt, just felt that it was possibly a nuclear attack on Pakistan. These are the times when you know there is a, there is a saying it's all rumors but it is being spread all around that China might attack uh, Taiwan. Similarly, it is all being said that India might attack Pakistan. So when these are the times when the conference, you know, with the opponent or with the neighbor is not as much, then these kind of incidences, they must be curtailed, there must be an action against these. So this is where we re require confidence building measure at a serious level, right? So uh, that is the reason that this editorial was uh, present. So mechanisms such as nuclear risk reduction center, right, this, these are recommended, 
right? Just like what we have, uh, you know, under Indus Water Commission with the help of World Bank, we must have an association between India and Pakistan where we talk about uh, building more confidence than launching rockets in, into the territories of each other, right? Anyhow, this is the update here. The second one is on higher education fixing in India. What is the ideal way to rescue the students, right? Now see, a very good data given here. Right now, the number of proportion of students who are enrolled in higher education is 27%. 27% of the total number of students in this particular age who are eligible, right? Who are eligible, 27% of them only pursue higher education. But India has said we will have them uh, converted to 50% student pursuing education by the age, by the year of 2030. So when you have so many students, right now we have 4 crore students, 4 crore Indians. I share report saying 4 crore students in colleges, undergrads. And if you want to drastically increase this number, where will they go? They will go abroad if they have finances. What is easier for them is to find colleges there. They are better payments, they are better uh, systems for migration, right? This is what makes them go. So scholarships, on-campus jobs, work permits, this is what allows them to go abroad. We will have to institute these systems also in India. Only a policy change will not be sufficient. Policy change, gross enrollment ratio increase will not be the only solution. We will have to increase the infrastructure, public and private infrastructure. We will have to do something about the policy for reservation. Maybe expand the number of seats. This is what government has been doing as of now. But make this seat available to the most deserving candidate. We all know that reservation policy is important. However, targeting the uh, person is more more uh, is going to make this system more efficient, right? So reservation policy needs a revamp. This is one point. Then increasing the supply of these institutions. This is another one, right? What about providing scholarships and jobs? This is what is going to encourage students to be in India rather than go abroad, right? So beautiful editorial, but summarizing it for you in these three points, this is the important thing here. And please remember these kind of data. We have discussed this data earlier, 50% by 2030. But if it comes up again and again, this seems it is important, all right? Students in higher education and their enrollment. The third editorial is on uh, Washington, Beijing, reset underway or not. A very good one. Now this editorial says that uh, it is known, this is about, this conversation is about USA, uh, China and then Russia at one end. Now it is, now the world knows that Russia is not up to very good things because it has indulged in war. Its economy is already getting hampered. Its relationship with European Union has already gotten spoiled. So war was a major step ahead which should determine what Russia wanted in future. So now it is clear what Russia's stand is. But then what is China's stand? This is what is the question. How USA should view China? There are three perspectives in which they say China could be viewed. One is a competitor for now. Competitor who wants to compete, but we know that they will, they will not participate in the war. Why? Because they know that if they compete and you know there is a war happening, it is not good for Chinese economy only. You know why? See, around 84 trillion this is this is some data that I had excavated. Around 84 trillion is the world world economy. The total GDP of the world is around 84 trillion, 85 trillion. 25 trillion is the trade between countries. And if you see most of the trade that happens, it happens between countries like USA, China, European Union, ASEAN. So around out of 25 trillion of the international trade that happens, around 7-8 trillion, even more, that would happen between these major economies. And if China is a responsible nation, it would not want war. If war happens, effectively the demand in China would reduce, right? So China is a competitor, but it would not want war. This is first aspect of viewing, one thought. Second thought is China is not a competitor. China is uh, a nation which is going to do far more than competition and it, it, is a, in a, it is an adversary in the long run, adversary. But even in case of adversary, they have assumed that China will not want a war. And the third case that has been thought about the think, think tank is that China will associate itself very well with Russia for the war. These are the three post prospects which have been thought. But the second one that China could be an adversary or the first one that China is a competitor these are being widely accepted as compared to China being an associate of Russia, right? These first two have been accepted widely as compared to accepting that China is an associate of Russia. This is what the article says. 
because uh, China, we have seen those indications that China is not associated completely with Russia in this war, right? China wants to participate by saying that Russia's, uh, you know, uh, Russia's defense should not be compromised. However, it also would speak of territorial integrity. That means in favor of Ukraine. So these are the three ways in which China has been thought of. But Chinese response also is in three different ways. Very interesting. Chinese response is in three different. See, I've explained all of it here, right? Economic and technological competitor. This is one. And this is where US should accommodate. The second one is China as a long-term adversary. Long-term adversary. Uh, and the third one is China-Russia axis, which is about their friendship. So they will only increase the war tendencies. Third one has not been accepted. First two have been largely accepted in the think tank in USA. Now, uh, the response could be seen in three ways again. China supports Russian annexation. This is one. And this would only antagonize European countries. They would not want to, you know, uh, talk with China. When China says that Russia is all right, they would not want to talk. So it will antagonize Chinese interests. This is one possibility. The second is engagement towards all stakeholders. As I mentioned, saying that Russia is important, its sovereignty is important, its defense is important, as well as Ukraine's sovereignty and integrity is important. So speaking to all the uh, stakeholders. And the third one is playing the role of a wider peacemaker, just like some other countries are doing. Israel is also peacemaking. Turkey is also making peace, right? So if China plays these second and third role, it will be far better for China itself in the future. A few things are very clear. The editorial concludes by saying that USA and China are not becoming friends. That Russia has been sidelined. And in, in these emerging times, India also should frame its policies in a way that... Um, you know, the, the foreign policies, diplomacy is dynamic. When USA is ready to collaborate with China, when USA is ready to collaborate with a country like Iran for fuel, just to be able to sideline Russia, imagine why should not India also change its policies according to circumstances and needs? This is what the editorial says. An adjustment would be the way to proceed and here, and hence India must be willing to make similar diplomatic and strategic changes. So I've covered this editorial. For you. If you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments, and share. uh, shares. All right. Now, today's case study is on Bahini. What is happening in Sikkim government is that they are distributing free sanitary, uh, free and safe sanitary napkins to all the students of uh, who have read, uh, who have attained the uh, age of puberty, 9th to 12th standard. And this is a great move ahead when we look at developing health and developing awareness at adolescent age, right? So many of the girls skip five, six days of, uh, you know, uh, school because lack of availability of pads. And now they will be able to attend these schools. There will be lesser stigma. They will be available of provisioning for this. See, because finally, if the school doesn't provide, who provides for it? It is out of pocket expenditures. And um, this, if the school can aid, this will be a great step ahead. Until now, who has been providing? It has been Anganwadi centers distributing it, Asha, Asha, um, Anganwadi workers distributing it to other people. Right. So imagine the center of the family, the female, not in being good health. If the female is not in good health, the children will not be taken care of. Right. The family work in traditional setups, the family work, the chores, right, will not be taken care of. Social relationships. Imagine this. Right. It is the females who take care of the elderly in the family. It is the female who build rapport with the neighbors. All that will not be taken care of. What about the education and health needs of the children? They will be ignored. Right. So the female's health is of prime significance, especially to the traditional uh, familial setup in our country. So this is where the Bahini scheme of Sikkim government plays a very, very centered and uh, pragmatic approach. All right. So this is the update. Let me look at the questions. Okay, Vivek says, sir, exactly same with me. Okay, same thing happened to Vivek also. I hope you didn't make the transaction. Amran says, traditional doctors use rhino blood to cure controlled diabetes. Yes, yes, rhino, rhino blood, all right. Rhino's horn are also used for traditional uh, system of medication. They're also used for other systems, uh, uh, for example, to create the, uh, uh, you know, the, the various, you know, works uh, on, on the, on the, you know, 
the works name i'm forgetting what it is called as so rhino's horns are widely used but then it also kills the animal right all right so thank you for participation we'll quickly meet in the feature news also one quick update for all of you that is that um, tomorrow i will be recording the lecture i will not be taking it live i'll be recording it but it will play right at 6 pm right so this is the update ivory ivory along with that there's another work ivory is specifically i think for uh, uh, a few animals only right there's another name for it i will i've studied about it i'll share with you there are two words for it ivory is one of them definitely so tomorrow's lecture will be both the lectures will be there they are interesting topics but then i have record them in advance you people put your comments it will be streaming live you will put the comments and then i will get back to you right and then day after tomorrow is holy so there will be holiday what am, what am i doing if i am not you know uh, coming to you live i'll be going back home evening i'll be leaving so afternoon i'll be recording but please do be present because uh, this is the fourth day tomorrow will be the fourth day for this week and four days you will have to prepare the uh, short notes that is important right so let's meet uh, quickly in the next video that is on corporate governance today all right i'll share about this ivory and the other um, stuff in the other video thank you for participation uh, also all the people viewing offline please ensure that you give inputs feedback for improvement there is a link here in the live section we will also get that placed in the offline uh, chat so that you are able to so that you are able to give your inputs all right thank you for participation please prepare notes we will quickly meet you in the other video thank you